Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 979. Hey, if you want to download the Swarpwick 979 to 980, click on the link below the video. In this video, we want to see what to do when we have two lookup values in a lookup, and we can't have a helper column. So we want to look up the name given a state and a city. So there's two columns, right? We want to look up Washington, Seattle, or Washington, Burien, or whatever it is, and return this name over here. So this is a classic two lookup values. How in the world do we do it? Well, we could easily add a helper column. That means we'd add a formula here that joins these two things. Now, all these solutions are dependent on the fact that there's no repeats when you consider two items. So there's no repeat down here of Washington, Seattle. Right? So the typical solution is to join these two and do a concatenated helper column and copy down. And that is a beautiful solution. But let's see what to do here if uh, we're not. And really, I, I'm going to do the array formula quickly here because I've done this before. And then I want to show you a couple other uh, considerations. Well, I want to look up this uh, range right here. And I'm going to hit F4, comma, and then the row number. Well, I'm going to use the match function to find Washington and Burien. So I'm going to use match. I'm going to have to join these two cells using Shift 7, the ampersand. So now, with by joining these two things, we've gone from two things to one things. Right? And then comma, the lookup array, you join the actual columns. Now, as soon as you do this, that is a join operation. It is occurring on an array of values, so you've jumped into the realm of array formula. Now, this is an expensive um, ar array operation, meaning it takes a long time to calculate if you have large data sets. So if I were to hit F9, this is a small data set, you can see that it, in essence, created our helper column inside of our formula. It joined each one of the items from the two columns, right? Control Z. Now I'm actually going to F4 this to lock this. All right, and we um, don't have this sorted, so we're going to use exact match. Now this is an array formula, so I'm going to have to use Control Shift and Enter. You can see those curly brackets get entered. Control Shift Enter is you saying I did an array formula. Curly brackets are Excel telling you I understood. Now that's fine and dandy. And that would work, but here's a great solution. Now, I'm going to, we're going to look at two alternatives here. And really, this alternative is when you never are going to copy your formula. You would never want to do this formula if you're doing it for a single cell, because guess what? There's the dget function, dget. Now, dget requires a couple things. One is you have field names at the top of each column. And you're not going to be copying the formula anyway, anywhere. So database, field names, all the records, comma, field, you actually have to put the name of the field you want to go and get something from, and then the criteria. The reason that dget doesn't always work is because the criteria has to be set up with field names horizontally and the AND criteria below it. Right? And that's not always possible. In addition, if you're copying your formula, you can see how this would restrict your ability to create some formula with field names and copy it down. But if you have this situation, forget all those array formulas. Forget all the helper columns. Use dget. They both work. Now, I'm going to copy this right here. And the reason that it's so nice, I'm going to put it in edit mode of control V. And then watch this. I'm going to drag these down here. The city is right there, and the state is right there. So I'm going to move this over here, and this over here, and this here. Let's see if this works. Yeah, there you go. Control Shift Enter. That took a while. So again, this formula is great if you're copying it down a column because it beats dget, because dget is just real prohibitive when it comes to that. Now I want to look at a third example. And right here, notice that we're doing exact match. An exact match. Uh, has to look through every single item linearly one at a time to try and get a match. If you can try and do approximate match, uh, the calculation time is much faster. So anytime you can avoid this, it's fine. Now in this situation, you might not, this solution here, you might not be always able to do this. In fact, probably lots of times you couldn't. But if you could sort this data set, not only could we take advantage of approximate match, but we could use lookup function, which can handle 
array calculations like that join calculation without using control shift enter now the trick is we have two columns we always think about sorting the first column of a lookup table and then use an approximate match but when you have two columns in a two-way lookup then you have to sort in a certain order and it, the order is the we're going to sort city first and then state so I'm going to right click sort I'm going to do A to Z and then I'm going to sort the find the A to Z button wherever it is and sort now we have uh, this sorted so within California sorted this whole column is perfectly sorted but within California we have these cities sorted now we can take advantage of approximate match now lookup it's not V or H lookup it's lookup only does approximate match but now we can simply take this as our lookup value comma and the lookup vector I can just join these right here now the join operation still takes a long time but the fact that we're going to do uh, approximate match is great and we can avoid control shift enter the result vector now of course what lookup does is it'll take this join value control I hit F9 now I'm going to control Z and it will find it within this lookup vector find the position and then for the result vector it'll pull whatever uh, item is at that position from that result vector now I forgot to lock these F4 F4, F4. And there we go. A little bit faster because it's approximate match and we don't have to use Control Shift Enter. I just did Control Enter. No uh, curly brackets up there. Double click and send it down. All right. Uh, so look up if we can sort the columns. If we can't sort them, we can use index and match, index and match with Control Shift Enter. But ah, I love DGate. If you have a data set and you can set your criteria area up like this, that is a thing of beauty. All right, we'll see you next trick. Oh, wait a second. Uh, I want to remind you, over here on this sheet, I'm working on a new book, Control Shift Enter Mastering Excel Array Formulas, out in spring 2013. This is a great book. It's kind of a beginning to end how to do array formulas. All the nuts and bolts of array formulas presented in kind of a systematic way. All right, we'll see you next video.